Hello there monsters and men, ladies and people and welcome to Recharging and welcome to the range test of the Volkswagen ID7. The car on the MEB platform that introduces the new and improved more efficient motor and a car that has a WLTP range of around 600 kilometers. But I will not be getting that 600 kilometers because the weather this weekend is pretty shitty. It doesn't look like it right now because there is sun. Oh, it's blinding me. But trust me, the weather this whole weekend, the weekend that I have this car will be shitty. Between five and 10 degrees Celsius, there is quite a lot of wind and it is raining from time to time. And it will stay like this the whole weekend, so it doesn't matter when I do the test. So you can count this as a winter range test instead of a spring summer range test. And therefore, again, I will not be getting that 600 kilometers, but what will I get? Let's find out. Diesel cars passing through, diesel cars passing through. I hope you don't hear that. Anyway, you know the drill. I will do one test at 90 kilometers per hour to simulate those mixed driving conditions. And I will do one test at 130 kilometers per hour. The car is charging up and then let's go. Yeah, it is currently dark and well, that wasn't what I anticipated. And that is because my whole evening is going different than I had planned. And that is really, really frustrating. My plan was to do my 90 and 130 kilometers per hour range test, partly in the Netherlands and partly in Germany. So that afterwards I was close to Germany and I could do my top speed and acceleration test. But when I was doing my 90 kilometers per hour range test, I encountered a traffic jam in Germany. And in the traffic jam, it took me 45 minutes to do one kilometer. Yeah, the traffic jam took me 45 minutes for one freaking kilometer. That meant my whole test was ruined. The consumption number wasn't correct anymore. My whole test was ruined and I was already one and a half hours in my test. So I had to redo my test or I have to redo my test. But I calculated, okay, I have to redo my test. Then I drive for this long, do the 130 kilometers per hour test, then top speed, then acceleration test. That means that I am home at three o'clock at night minimum, not maximum, minimum. And that is a bit too late for me. So yeah, what do you do then? Well, what I did, I drove back to the Netherlands. I am doing my 90 kilometers per hour test at the moment. After this, I will do my 130 kilometers per hour test. And then I will do my top speed and acceleration test probably tomorrow or something. But again, the whole evening is going different than planned. <sighs> But anyway, when the car had used 10% state of charge, it currently used almost 15%, but when it had used 10%, I did drive 44 kilometers. So the range it seems like right now is 440 kilometers. Or is it? No, it isn't. It isn't because currently I have headwind. And again, the wind is strong this evening, basically this whole weekend, which is also pre pretty annoying, but it is what it is. The wind is pretty strong. I am battling headwind. The average consumption at the moment is 18.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. But since I am battling headwind and the, he and the wind is strong, the consumption is high. So when I turn around, the consumption will be much lower. It will even out and then I can say something about the range. At the moment, I can't say anything about the range. So yeah, I will just keep on driving. I will turn around eventually, probably at around 45% state of charge. And then I will drive back. And yeah, that is what it is. Again, I cannot say anything about the range at the moment. Okay, I am turning around at the moment. So that means I am going from headwind to tailwind. That also means that the consumption will drop. But I am very curious how much it will drop. At the moment, the consumption is 18.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So in the next update, you will know how much it has dropped. Where do I have to go? This way. I am not really familiar here. There we go. There's the sign. I'm going on the highway again. And as I have said, 
In the next update, you will know how much the consumption has dropped. Yay, it is raining again. But anyway, I have been driving with Tailwind for a while now. And I have to say, the consumption is dropping slower than I expected. Because when I turned around, the consumption was 18.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Yeah, the weather is shitty. And at the moment, the consumption is still 17.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So not that much lower. The range, it seems like right now, is still around 450 kilometers. So also, that has not gone up by a whole lot since the 10% update. So yeah. I will just go to the charger now, I think it's another 25 kilometers and then I will get you the result. Alrighty, so I didn't drive from 75 to 25% state of charge like I had planned to, but that is less important on MEB cars because on MEB cars the state of charge kill is linear, unlike Korean cars for example. I did drive the same amount of kilometers with headwind as with tailwind though, because that is important and that should balance out each other. Anyway, here is the result of the 90 km per hour test. I started my test with 75% state of charge and I arrived at the charger with 32%. So that means I've used 43%. On that 43% I have done 191 kilometers. So the range in these terrible conditions is 444 kilometers. The average consumption was 17.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And I have to say, I did expect the consumption to drop more when driving with tailwind, but well, it didn't. I also have to say that those 444 kilometers is winter range because the weather this weekend is absolutely terrible. At the moment, it is around 6 degrees Celsius. It was raining from time to time and there is quite some wind. But again, the weather this weekend will stay like this the whole weekend. Amazing! The WLTP range of this particular version of the ID7 though is almost 600 kilometers. So can you get that in summer? And that will be tough. I think that will be tough because 600 kilometers would mean a consumption of less than 13 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That would be really, really impressive. No, in summer I do expect that you can get a range of around 550 kilometers when driving on mixed roads, which is still a consumption of less than 14 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which again is pretty good for such a big car. Anyway, I am charging up, that is the result of the 90 test, and then let's do the 130 km per hour test. So, when I started my 130 km per hour test, it started raining, and now it is getting dry again, luckily, but damn, this shitty weather, this freaking weather, but anyway, the car has used 10% state of charge, and on the 10% I have driven 27, 28 kilometers. So the range at the moment, 270 kilometers, 280. But I am again battling headwind, or is it really headwind? Because last time when I turned around, it didn't make that much of a difference. Maybe it is because the wind is coming more from the north. It should be coming from the northwest, but it's maybe coming more from the north. So then it is side wind. But I will just keep on going. I can't say much about the range at the moment because again, turning around tailwind. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically that. This car is nice and quiet though at 130 km per hour. Also really stable, I mean, that is what the Germans do really well. It doesn't matter which German brand you buy, Volkswagen, Audi, BMW, is there, is there a lower brand than Volkswagen, a German brand that is lower in the food chain? I don't think so. No. Yeah, doesn't matter which German brand you buy, they all do that really well. They are made for high speeds. Leaving the highway, time to turn around and time to record. How the hell does this go? Okay. Time to record this way. Yeah, I can drive. Yeah, I can drive. Time to record the average consumption at the moment because here I go on the highway again. And that is 26.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That is not that bad. Power! Yeah, plenty of power this car. 0 to 107 seconds. It's picking up. There we go. Uh, well, let's say 26.9. It's that after giving it some power. 
reset or resume I mean not reset resume and then let's go all the way back and then let's see what I end up with as a consumption while driving 130 kilometers per hour and well you will hear that result probably now so I am at the parking place near my home again so here is the result of the 130 kilometers per hour test I started my test with 73% state of charge and I stopped my test with 25%. So that means I've used 48%. On that 48% I have driven 138 kilometers. So the range while driving 130 kilometers per hour is 288 kilometers. The average consumption was 25.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And I have to say, 25.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers is not that bad of a result comparing it to the 90 kilometers per hour test results or test consumption. And that is probably because, well, if you drive higher, you of course have a higher air resistance. But since this car is not a crossover or SUV and it has a low drag coefficient of 0.23, well, that air resistance has less impact on this car. So again, Less crossovers, more cars like this, please. And also, keep in mind, okay, I stopped there for a bit. I really want to go to bed, but keep in mind that that 288 kilometers is winter range. In summer, you can easily get more than 300 kilometers with this car while driving 130 kilometers per hour. And that is just really good. So the 90 result wasn't that efficient, even though it is winter winter-ish uh, but the 130 kilometers per hour result is actually not that bad yeah that's the conclusion and well it's time for me to go to bed my brain is stopping slowly thank you a lot for watching if you liked it well please give a like and do subscribe if you have something to say leave a comment and then as always to be continued mm -hmm.